In this video I'm going to talk about some further concepts in regards to advanced XY graphs. Now just starting off with a basic XY graph, the thing I want to look at and consider is the area under the line. So if we pick a point X and want to know the area between 0 and X, if the graph is simply Y equals X, then the width will be X and the height will be X and you'll notice that this is a triangle. Now the area of a triangle is half the height times the width so the area under this line is just a half x squared because it's a half because that's the formula here the height is x the width of that is x so it's a half times x times x so that gives us the area under this line. And if we take this uh, as an example where we've got x equals 3 so we want the area between 0 and 3. We can follow the same procedure and work out that the area is 4.5. What if we don't have a straight line? What if we have a curve that does something like this? It gets a bit more complicated. So the first thing that we need to do is identify a point of interest. So we need to go from some point from 0 to point x, so a point that we pick. And then we need to split the graph up into a series of trapeziums like so. We can then work out the area of each trapezium and add them up and that will give us the area under the curve. Now this method is only approximate because it won't exactly follow the curve in some places and so the area won't be exactly right but the smaller we make these trapeziums the narrower we make them then the more accurate we will be. Okay area of a trapezium is the mean height times its width and the mean height is its two heights divided by two. So height one plus height two divided by two gives us the mean height of the trapezium and then multiplied by the width will give us the area. Okay, so let's take the example of y equals x squared. Here we've got some numbers calculated. So x goes from zero to two in 0 0.25 increments. And then we also have then that calculated. So we've got x squared here um, to give us the y value. If we plot these out then we see that we have this curve like this and we can start to draw in our trapeziums and we can work out the area of each. So this first one goes from 0 to 0 0.25 um, so it's 0.25 wide and the height the first height here is 0 and the second height here is 0 0.06 and we can get that from this table. So then we can work out an area we can do this for the second trapezium, the third trapezium, the fourth trapezium, each time taking the heights from this table here. So for example trapezium 4, x equals 0.75, then we get the height as 0.56 because that's the value of y at this point, and then for x equals 1, the height equals 1. So we can put those numbers into here and work out the area of that trapezium. Now we can continue to do this for all of the remaining trapezium and we can then work out the area for each. So for all these different trapeziums we've got eight trapeziums, one to eight, and then we can work out an area for each. Now what we really uh, need to think about and what we really need to be interested in is the cumulative area from zero to any point x. Okay, so this is um, an important result that we need to get to. So in order to work out the cumulative area, we need the area of each individual trapezium and we're going to add them up. So between 0 and 0.25, the area is simply the area of that first trapezium. Between 0 and 0.5, we need to add these two first trapeziums up and we get this number here. For the third one, we need to add up the area of the first three trapeziums. For the fourth one, it's the fourth, it's the first four trapeziums that need to be added up, and so on. So then we can work out the cumulative area as we add another trapezium on each time. Okay, so now we can plot this these values. So we can plot cumulative area versus x on a graph like this. We can put these data points in. And if we put a line of best fit through these, um, what we find is that this actually follows approximately cumulative area x cubed over 3. Now if we'd done this more exactly um, by getting the exact area, remember I said trapeziums, by using the trapeziums it's only approximate, 
but if we'd been able to be really accurate we'd find that the cumulative area is actually x to the 3 divided by 3 exactly and that's a really important result that we need to bear in mind and keep hold of okay so we saw that for y equals x the area the cumulative area is given by x squared over 2 so we saw that at the start we, we sort of said it was a half x squared here I'm just putting it as x to the power of 2 divided by 2 we just saw also that the cumulative area for x squared is x to the 3 over 3 if we'd carried on and looked at y equals x cubed we'd see that the cumulative area is x to the power of 4 divided by 4 x to the 4 gives us cumulative area of x to the 5 over 5 x to the 5 is x to the 6 divided by 6 for the cumulative area and I hope you can see a pattern emerging now because as scientists, engineers, mathematics, mathematicians we, we like to find patterns and make generalizations so the general pattern here is that for y equals x to the n the area is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 okay so just a note on terminology we've been studying calculus this video has been talking about uh, principles to do with calculus which is the study of continuous change and in particular the specific uh, area has been integral calculus which also gets referred to as integration this focuses on accumulation of quantities and areas under curves okay so we've seen in this video and in the previous video that if we have y equals x to the n that we can differentiate this and get n times x to the power of n minus 1 and we've seen in this video that if we integrate this we get the area as x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 but if we were to differentiate this function here we end up back here and if we were to integrate this function here we'd end up back here so what this shows is that uh, integrating is the reverse of differentiating and, and vice versa let's look at this with an example so if we have y equals x to the 6 if we differentiate this we get 6x to the 5 but if we integrate we have to raise the power here by 1 so that it goes back to x to the 6 and then we divide by 6 so we end up back here if we integrate this we get x to the 7 over 7 but if we differentiate this function back we have to drop the power by 1 so it goes to x to the 6 and then we have to multiply by 7 and so the sevens cancel out and again we're back here so that has been a video talking about some further concepts in advanced xy graphs